Hi, my name is Makana. Welcome to Fab Lab Fundamentals. Today we're going to show you how to operate the 3D scanner. So let's get started. So here we have the Revo Point Mini 2 3D scanner. So just open up the container and you want to take out the Mini 2 scanner here. Place it on the side. Um, you got your turntable here. With um, you could speed up the by turning the knob, you can make the turntable spin faster. You can have the directions you want to go to, and then the power port. Um, these are a bunch of cables you use to power the scanner and the turntable, and also your tripod here. And then usually this will be like your part. So today we're going to use this sculpture. So once you got all your equipment out, it's time to start plugging things in. So first off, uh, you get the mini two scanner, you go to the back and then you see this triangular port right here, matches up with this one. So you got to plug in and then tighten the screw. So it connects and has a firm connection between the cable and the scanner. So that's good. <clears throat> Next, uh, you see this uh, little slot right here. You gotta get your tripod and just slide it in. So, like so. And it should click. Um, if you need to undo it, you just press down on this button, this left side button, and you could pull it out. So, there you go. Um, then you could fold out the legs. That's your tripod setup. Um, for this cable, it's a regular USB, <clears throat> so you can just plug it into your tower. Any port should work. Now connect your scanner to the computer. Next is the turntable. So like I said, that's the power port right there. We got our USB-C um, cable here. We're going to plug that in. And then this will plug in also to your computer. This could also be powered um, through an outlet and that is located in the box for the adapter. So from here, you could place your um, object uh, or your part on the turntable. And then if you wanted to turn it on, you can go under here and then move it to whatever side you want to go to. So I'm going to go clockwise and you can kind of see that the table is turning. And then as I increase the speed knob I showed earlier, I'll start rotating a little bit faster. And this will be better shown with the part on it. So I put that part on there. This is minimum speed, very slow versus max speed. Goes pretty fast. So once we have our part set up here, um, you'll know that the scanner is on with this blue light you can see here. And then now we got to move on to our um, program here. So we go to the computer and then we click Revo Scan 5, this application right here. And it will pop up this window. Um, when you plug in everything correctly, you'll see that the Mini 2 scanner is connected here. Um, for a new project, you're going to click New Project. And then as you can see here, this is what it's showing on screen at the moment. Um, for this, you're gonna be mainly be focusing on um, these, the exposure and also, um, so basically it's the exposure towards the depth camera and then the exposure to the RGB camera. The main one you're gonna be focusing on is the depth camera. And then if you want a scan with color, that's what the RGB camera is for. So moving back to our um, scanner, we want to position our tripod in a way that you could see our part fully. So you just kind of want to play around. So once you have it in position, what you're mainly looking at is this right side here. 
So as you move your scanner closer and farther, it'll tell you like whether it's too far, far, good, excellent, and too near. You want to aim towards this ex excellent um, uh, description. Um, and as you move your scanner in and out, adjust the angle, this will vary. And so you can see here, I got in the excellent um, range. And as it spins, of course, with the depending on your model, it may go up, it may go down, but as long as it's in this area, it should be fine. And then you could tell from the RGB camera here that you kind of want your part to be within this square. That's just the middle of the screen. And also you can see on your depth camera that um, it's looking pretty good. Um, in terms of what objects you could uh, scan with this, um, for any dark, reflective, or transparent um, parts, you will have to have uh, some of the dots, some of the reflecting dots that will catch on the scanner. So if we go back in this little case here, there's some spray and also some dots you could put on your part. So. In this bag, you have all these little dots. This will serve as points for the scanner to recognize and it will act as nodes. So if your part is dark, transparent or reflective, you may want to put these dots on there. But since our part is white, it should be able to catch and it's showing that it catches on screen here. So once we are good, the, the range is in the excellent category, um, our parts in the middle of the camera range. Um, we can mess with the settings here. Most of the time you don't have to touch any of these. So uh, for accuracy, it will always be high. A tracking mode, it could be feature tracking or it could be marker tracking. That'll be depending on whether you put the um, dots on your part. And here's the drop down menu for the accuracy. Most of the time we go with high accuracy. And then object type, you see dark object here, but ours is a lighter object. So we just hit general object. And then all these you could play around with if you choose to do so. And it has a description of each and every setting you can change down below. So once we got our part set up, um, we could hit start. So this triangle right here, hit start. And then you can look at the screen here that um, this is everything the scanner is catching. And so this may take a while. You want to make sure you get every edge, every corner, um, and especially at, at the end, since this is on a turntable, we will have to get the underneath portion to get the full model. But I'll show that to you when we get to that part. So with most of the exterior faces um, already scanned, you can hit pause right here, and this will stop the, um, the scanning process. And then you could also look at your model, like see what has been scanned so far. And so just look around and you can see all these open portions. Um, those are places that the scanner has not reached. So we're going to have to adjust the model to reach those areas to get a fully scanned model. And so by doing that or to do that, I'll make sure you pause your, your scanning and I'm going to go back to the, um, the part itself. And so this is going to be kind of tough because you, you will get your fingers scanned in here, um, depending on the part, of course. So what we're going to do is you kind of want to match up what's currently on screen right now um, on your scanner view. And since these are like underneath portions of your part, um, you need to grab it in a way that your fingers won't show up completely in the scan. Um, and so you're gonna have to play around with the distance as I mentioned earlier. Um, so let's get started. So one of the few things that we're gonna need to scan is this under portion here and also the space, as long as any um, overhangs um, for this part. So such as the nose and nostrils, the chin. And so to do that, we wanna line up, get our part as close as possible. Remember the excellent range over here. So that's too close. So right around here is good. So once you have a good grip of your part and you're ready, you're gonna hit the start button back over here. So we're gonna hit start. And so one thing that you'll notice is that it doesn't pick up from 
you will need to start from where it last scanned. So it needs to rec there you go. So it recognizes that last scan and you kind of just want to twirl it in a way that will reach the bottom, different bottom parts, like so. Okay. And so this process is a little bit hard. You have to kind of play around with your part here just to make sure you have everything. And so, Keep going, twirl in, and I think that should be good. So we hit pause, and we can kind of look over our part. So you can see where my hands were, um, but we got majority of the part scanned. And so with that being said, we can hit um, the check mark for complete. So I click that. And then this is where it's gonna load into the post-processing um, part of this program. So um, there's this one click edit here um, and that will basically run through all of these functions to give you a, uh, a product. So we can click that here and then you can hit apply in this right corner. And then you could see these are the steps it's gonna go to in order to render. So it's gonna do um, kind of go through its raw version, fuse some stuff, um, go through the meshes and then the textures. So we just hit apply and then it's just going to start loading. So from here, you're just going to have to wait um, as it does its, um, as it does its process. It went through its raw and fused um, steps for the rendering. And so now it's on mesh. So it just hit apply again and it'll run through this process. One thing you'll notice just from this uh, screen right here is that all my hat, everything that had to do with my hands are gone. Uh, so that's due to, depending on which setting you use, you can go point cloud edit or mesh edit. Um, it basically, you could isolate um, these portions that scanned my hands, and then you're able to delete those portions. And then I'll just leave your part that you're trying to scan. So now we're gonna wait again until it's complete and we'll come back to it. So now we're back after, um, the one click edit did the mesh. So this is the time you want to take to look around your part, see if there's any holes, um, any defects in the scanner. And so um, it's kind of look, all I'm doing is left clicking and holding to, to move this part around. And if you're off screen, you could click on the, um, you can click on the scroll wheel and that will kind of move your part over. So. Just look around, see any defects, and oh, look at there. We have a hole right here, um, but no worries. Um, this is a common defect. All you have to do is select this fill holes feature. And when you do that, it will highlight red as so. And then you look at the right side. And so we have plane or curve. So you could select either one and hit detect. And this is gonna scan your part and see if there's any holes in your part. And so it'll outline in green here. And then from there, you wanna select that. And so now it's all in red. See here that there's other parts through this hole. You can click those two. There you go. There you go. And then once you selected your holes, you can hit uh, apply here. And that should fill all your holes in. There you go. All the holes are filled in. So with your defects out of the way, um, and if you get any other defects, that's what all these different um, options are for. Uh, the point cloud is mainly that uh, the entire model as nodes and then the mesh is how it looks right now. So nice and smooth. So you can click all around and you can smooth it out, simplify it, fill the holes, isolate certain parts. Um, this isolation feature is mainly if you need to cut out your hand. So if your hand got somehow connected to the mesh, you could hit this isolation um, feature and then you could select your hand and delete it out of the model. So now with everything is all fixed up, we can hit export 
And then depending on which one you want, you can select the point clouds if you want, or the mesh model, or even both if you want both. So I'm gonna select the mesh model because I just want the STL of this. And then we got here, you could have the different uh, save types. So the document types. So we got STL, the object and PLY. So I want the STL. So if I wanted to 3D print this, so hit save. And for the sake of the video, I'm gonna put in our download folder. So it's saved now. And if you want to open up any slicing program, so we're going to open up Prusa Slicer here. It's the one we use in Fab Lab. And then you want to drag in your part, like so. And let me move this around so we can get a clear view of it. Look at that. That's our part. We just got to mess a few settings, mess with a few settings in the slicer and we can get this printed for us. And we already went ahead and did this. And so here is how it looks. Of course, there are some overhangs, but overall it's pretty similar to what we had here. So this is the comparison. So this is the part we scanned. This is the part we got um, after scanning. So pretty similar. And it looks good. And with that, that is how you operate the 3D scanner.